Yo, what's going on guys, Tanmay for Simple Snippets and welcome back to another video on campus placements and as the title of the video suggests, in this video I'm gonna do a Q&A style video wherein I'll be answering some of your questions and some of the questions that I feel are very important and we'll be taking a look at these questions in detail and I'm sure you'll find these very informational. If you are a final year IT student or computer science student and your placements are coming soon, then this video is definitely gonna give you a lot of insights and a lot of questions that you have will be solved in this video. So make sure you watch this video till the end. So a few days back, I also did a complete video on in the entire process of campus recruitment and placements in colleges, especially for freshers who are from computer science and information technology background. So if you have missed that video, you can check that video out. I'll drop the link in the video description. You will find it somewhere down and make sure you watch that video because that's a very comprehensive video. In fact, it's a pretty detailed and like 20 minutes long video wherein we go through the entire process of campus placements and talk about the aptitude, talk about the interview and the HR part, the technical part and everything. So yeah, in that video, at the end, I said that I'll do a Q&A style video for the part two of this entire campus recruitment process. And I took a lot of questions from my juniors, from my friends and from you, you guys. And I have also compiled some of them on my own because I think they need to be addressed. So yeah, let's get into these topics right away without wasting any time. So I have my computer over here and I've written all those questions and I'll give you my views and answers on those questions. So starting off from the general aptitude part. So the first question is where to study aptitude from? I think I've answered this question in the previous video, but yeah, you can go on any online competitive website and you don't need to actually buy any special books. But if you are actually wanting to buy some books, then you can check out this RS Agarwal, which probably will cost you around 500 rupees on any online shopping site like Flipkart or Amazon or something like that. But yeah, I would not recommend you to buy these books because if you just Google out online aptitude test preparation or something like that, you will get a bunch of websites where you can practice from. I did it from indiabix.com as I mentioned in the previous video, but there are many more and I'll drop some links in the description if you want to check that out as well. But yeah, I would not recommend you to buy any special book for that. Then moving on to the next question, what type of questions are being asked in general aptitude and is there any specific subtopic which is preferred? So there is no basic favorite or subtopic which is asked in quantitative aptitude that is the general aptitude part. But yeah, there are some frequent favorites which are asked for example like train problems, some statistics and graph analysis. So they'll be giving you a statistical graph, you have to analyze it and then there will be a bunch of like 5 to 10 questions on that graph. Then there are verbal skills, there are percentages, probability and all those basic common topics. So there's no specific topic as such which is focused more but it can vary from company to company or let's say if a company is in banking sector, okay? So it's a, what we say, financial tech company. So the questions might be more towards the statistics part or something like that. If it's a FMCG, then the questions would be more towards the operational research part. FMCG means fast moving consumer goods like paint manufacturing companies or some product manufacturing companies basically. So in that case, some questions would be more towards those traveling salesman kind of problems or something like that. So let's move on to the next question. How much time you have for aptitude test? Again, this varies from different companies to companies and different complexity levels. If the aptitude test is pretty complex, then you'll probably get like 60 minutes for 30 questions. And if it's very easy, then you'll be like getting for 30 questions, you'll get 40 minutes or even 30 minutes at times. So you also need to be fast. Okay. So these were general aptitude related questions. Moving on to the technical aptitude. So again, where to study technical aptitude from? I've answered this question in the previous video wherein I discussed about the complete process of campus placements. But yeah, the only way you can practice this technical part is by actually typing out the programs yourself and typing out the SQL queries for the DBMS part. Some online websites that I suggested were HackerRank and CodeChef. So those were the two which I visited frequently because those were the two that I only knew of. And I think the complexity level on those websites is a little bit high. But you can Google out certain problems, but the best way and the only way you can be good at technical is when you actually go ahead and type it out. You know, you cannot just read or by heart these programs. You have to type it out yourself. You have to try out those SQL queries yourself, especially the joins and those sub queries type of questions in SQL. Moving on, how much time you have for tech aptitude? Now this depends upon the complexity and the type of questions. So if a company is giving you like three major problems, then they'll probably give you an hour to solve those three problems. But if the questions are like 
um determine the output or find out the error in the program then the time limit would be reduced so for like 20 questions you will probably get 30 minutes okay so technical interview questions okay so what type of questions to be expected in technical interview well basic fundamentals are definitely need to be polished so you need to read about dbms the different types of normalizations you need to read about programming languages and those properties of programming languages especially um the object oriented part the pointers the dynamic memory allocation make sure you select one programming language and study it very thoroughly because there would be a question wherein the interviewer will ask you which is your favorite programming language and once you say c++ or once you say java then majority of the focus will be on those programming languages then another type of question you can expect in technical interviews would be the latest technologies so you will be asked what is cloud computing what is blockchain or what is big data or something like that so they are not expecting you to actually implement or practically expl- uh, explain them what is big data or practically implement those big data queries or something like that but they are expecting you to know at least the working or at least the theoretical aspect of what exactly is big data or what is cloud computing or what is blockchain you at least need to be able to explain them or you at least need to show that you've read about them okay so that's very important you need to be up to date with the latest technologies so another technical question would be the technologies which that company is working on so before you set for an interview make sure you read about that company and what technologies are being used in that company because then the questions might come or definitely would come some of the questions would be related to those technologies that that company is actually using because obviously if they are looking for a php developer they will not ask you c++ questions a lot right they would ask some questions on php so the technologies that they are working on try to focus and study about those and yeah, as i mentioned study one programming language very properly i would definitely recommend java programming c++ is also fine even php but yeah my recommendation would be java especially the core java part okay so moving on to the hr interview questions so so one of the users asked me what are the type of questions that can be expected in a hr interview or personal interview so basically you cannot actually predict what kind of questions can be asked because there is a whole what we say infinite amount of questions that can be asked in terms of a hr or personal interview but then there are certain regularly asked questions like tell me something about yourself this is kind of like the most famous question and the way you answer this is you tell them something that is not there on your resume or tell them something that adds value to your personality or add adds value to your technological skill for example if you just keep talking about your marks or if you just keep talking about something that's already there on their resume then they've already read that right so what extra are you providing when you say tell me something about yourself so they want to know you as a person and not your percentage and not your projects at that moment okay so talk about what are your interests what you like what you dislike maybe talk about your strengths not don't focus more on weaknesses but if you are talking about weaknesses make sure you tell them that you are doing something to improve on those weaknesses as well so other questions would be um where do you see yourself in 5 years then there is why choose our company so what i'll do is i'll just put this que- all these questions on the screen you can probably see it on the black screen and what i've done is i have shared this document which i had prepared during my interviews so i have pretty much answered all of these questions so i'll drop that doc in the video description make sure you download it and you can see my answers that i had prepared for these questions so obviously you cannot just copy those questions and to uh, fit it to your needs because you'll have to modify them but yes more or less a lot of things are pretty generic in those answers you can use those answers as it is but make sure they are genuine to you and it's not like you're faking it up so you can also create your own answers right there by just taking a look at my answers and definitely all these questions are very important which you can see probably on the screen so yeah this was a little bit of hr related questions and now let's talk about a little bit of in general questions of the entire whole campus recruitment process so one question was is academic criteria important now i know this is a bummer because a lot of times good programmers do not score very good marks in terms of theory right so a lot of times company comes with a criteria of like throughout 65% plus or throughout 75% plus which means that you need to have percentage above 65 right from your beginning that is right from the 10th standard till masters or till bachelors okay so that's not possible by everyone and what happens is during our early stages we are not very strong in programming so we probably must have scored less marks 
because of that our percentages are low and yeah that's that's a bama but yeah most of the companies do have a criteria and the major reason why they have a criteria is i suppose because they want to filter out candidates because they cannot interview everyone and i know that aptitude test does that purpose but yeah criteria is going to be there however lately i've been seeing that the companies are growing smarter and they are reducing that criteria from like 70 to 75 percent to now 65 to 55 also and some companies even don't have criteria they like you just need to not have any live kts and you're good to go so yeah there's improvement in that but yeah, academic criteria is important so i always tell students and juniors that you focus on your marks because they do carry a lot of importance because if you are scoring less than a particular range then you probably are not even eligible to sit for the company placements right so keep your extracurricular secondary whenever possible and if you are good at academics then you can go ahead in extracurricular activities i'll talk about extracurriculars in a minute so second question in general questions is is good english speaking important now this is a very important question because a lot of times there is a lot of negativity towards this question because most of the people are like if you know a good english then you are not intelligent and that's true that's very true i totally agree with you but let's take a scenario here you and your friend are being selected and you are going in the final hr round so you both are in the hr round and this company that is wanting a developer is a mnc and majority of the clients are from uk and us so majority of them are english speaking clients now they only want one candidate so you are not really good at speaking english but your friend is very good at speaking english so here's where the catch is now logically what should the company do obviously the company is going to select the guy who speaks better english and is going to drop you right so that is why speaking english is very important i just give you a logical reason and in general also if you're good at speaking english then you get a larger scope of companies and especially mncs where the clients are foreign clients so when you're dealing with foreign clients obviously the company wants a guy who can communicate with them directly and is fluent in english so to answer this question yes good english speaking is a very important now also note that good english speaking does not mean you are intelligent but it is very important to speak good english if you want to get into a mnc as as the example that i just gave you so the third question dress code in interviews well the dress code obviously by masters or by bachelors you pretty much are aware of how to dress well you need to be well groomed your nails should be cut your hair should be cut you should wear clothes that properly fit you not too loose not too tight and something like that so all those things are pretty basic right i'm not going to go into detail if you want i'll drop an article on how to dress well for interviews in the description you can check that out for ladies i really don't know how to dress and i, I have no idea about the dressing sense but in general what i feel is women usually are pretty well dressed compared to men and we we guys are pretty shabby i know that so yeah anyways you can check that article out so the next question is which programming languages to learn okay so what i would suggest is go with java because that is most likely going to be there in your curriculum otherwise c++ python all those general programming languages are pretty good you need to have an understanding of all the languages in your curriculum obviously but make sure you study one language very strong and there's no specific language which you should be focusing on Uh, unless you have some interest like if you are interested in kotlin or python or some other programming language which is not there in your curriculum then you can focus on that programming language so one of our subscriber ali hasan asks that what should we say when they ask tell me something about yourself so i pretty much answered that question i guess and what you can do is you can download the document and see my answer what i did is i just introduced myself and Uh, that and that i have completed my masters from this college and then i started off talking about my hobbies my interests and what i have done the projects that i have done and that that gives a positive effect to your answer because then they are looking for someone who is technologically savvy right they are not primarily looking for a guy who is good at extracurricular activities if a tech company is coming and is looking for a programmer they don't want a guy who is the winner in football or who has leaded a big event or who is a chair person in your tech fest they are not looking for that guy they are not looking for a guy who can manage well but they are looking for a guy who is technologically more savvy than all these other extra curriculars right so make sure you add that in your tell me something about yourself so if you have developed any projects if you have developed any freelance work or if you are, if your hobbies are in technology like writing about technology articles you can mention that as well 
सो अली हसन आई होप आई आंसर्ड योर क्वेश्चन यू कैन डेफिनेटली चेक माय आंसर इन दैट डॉक्यूमेंट दैट आई हैव प्रिपेयर्ड सो दीपेश एंड अर्सलान आस व्हाट इफ आई गेट सिलेक्टेड इन फर्स्ट कंपनी दैट कम्स कैन आई सेट फॉर द नेक्स्ट वन नाउ अगेन दिस टोटली डिपेंड्स ऑन कॉलेज टू कॉलेज बिकॉज मोस्ट कॉलेजेस डू अलाउ टू सेट फॉर अदर कंपनी प्रोवाइडेड दैट अदर कंपनी इज प्रोवाइडिंग हायर पैकेज सो देर आर दीज लैब्स एंड देर इज दिस कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ड्रीम कंपनी एंड द बेसिक कंपनीज सो इफ यू गेट अ पैकेज ऑफ फोर लैक्स देन you can sit for a company which is offering higher package than that so that's how logically it should be and that's what i feel but but yeah some colleges do not follow that rule and if you get selected you are out of this entire process of on campus placements but you can obviously apply off campus but yeah that's a shitty rule in some colleges where they do not allow to sit for more than one college right i totally do not agree with that then there is a question of varun he is asking how to answer a tricky question in a diplomatic way so i don't know varun i need an example of a tricky question but i think i do have a example of a tricky question so let me just try to put that question so is a question when an interviewer asks you which is your dream company so this question can be tricky in very few cases let me explain that so let's say the company that you're sitting the interview for is flipkart okay so it's an online product selling company so let's say the interviewer asks you which is your dream company so in that situation if by chance if by chance you say that my dream company is amazon okay i think i think this is clear right i don't even need to explain you what you've messed up because amazon and flipkart in india are the biggest rivals right so the interviewer is definitely not going to take it positively even though you probably might have some positive intentions and amazon truly is your dream company but if you are sitting for an interview at flipkart and if you are saying that amazon is my dream company i'm pretty sure that is the last thing that the interviewer wants to hear and you are definitely out of the interview process i mean it's it's basic right come on you cannot you cannot say your dream company is that company which is the absolute competitor of the company which is coming in for the interview so make sure you know about the competitors of these companies and not say something like this so that's a trick question so that's that's something that i know of other than that if you have any questions which you find tricky you can put them in the comments and i'll try to answer them and lastly one very important question is are extracurricular activities very important in terms of placements so the answer is again yes and no mostly it's no and there is a slight yes in it so let me explain so if a company is coming for a programmer's job or a database admin job or a networking job they primarily want you to be good at networking or programming or databases they do not care if you are the winner of the inter college football tournament or they do not care if you are the chairperson of your college festival or they do not care if you have managed a lot of people under you they are not looking for that skill primarily right so they are what they are looking for is you being technically good so no extracurriculars are definitely not important in that sense and yes you need to focus more on your academics as i mentioned just to get into the process and then you need to focus on your technical skills in the domain in which you want your job to be for example programming or database or networking and so on and so forth but again extracurricular activities come into importance only when there is a tie between two people or two or more people and the places or the job job seats are less that's where the competition comes into picture so if there is one candidate to be selected out of two and if both are equally good in technicals then they will look at these extracurricular activities and they'll be like okay you have management skills also you have good speaking skills also you have been a team player in your tournaments and so on and so forth so until and unless there is a tie between two people in the main requirement that is the technical requirement only then the extracurriculars are important otherwise i would definitely never recommend you to compromise your academics or you to compromise your technical skills over these extracurricular activities take part in extracurricular activities only when you are confident that your academics are good and only when your technical skills are good so yeah that concludes a bunch of questions me answering a lot of questions i hope many of your questions are resolved if you still have more questions you can put them in the comments and i'll try to answer them so i try to answer these questions in my view so these are my opinions and my views they might not apply to you you guys so everybody has their own answers but i hope this gives you good information about all these questions you have and that's it for this video guys i hope you like this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments that you like this video If you have more questions you can put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them and thanks for watching guys I'll talk to you guys in the next video peace